So today's actually a really cool day because uh, Mr. Soap and Clay is taking over the channel in a very useful and awesome way that you are going to appreciate. And in addition to that, I am also going to be giving you some information that I also think you're going to appreciate. And as a result, two people, two projects, gonna get a bit long, so we're going to jump right to it in just a minute. But before we do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 147 of 365 days of soap, and today, as I said, Mr. Soap and Clay is teaching us things. Mr. Soap and Clay has been wanting to build me new molds for quite some time, and he actually had a little bit of downtime and watched me break one of the prototypes from several years ago and went, now's the time. I'm going to build it. And I went, okay, cool. But if you're going to build it, I actually have a little bit different dimensions. And also, can we film it? And of course he said yes. So that's what we are doing today. We are going to build a soap mold and I'm going to give you all the dimensions for it to get 12 perfect bars of soap. And again, give you all of the dimensions of the wood and how they're secured and all the things so you can build your own. And in addition to that, I will also be lining said mold and we'll be talking about the best way to line and all the jazz. So you are completely prepared to go forth, make molds, line molds and make stuff. So let's get to the video. Okay, so the dimensions. Yeah, we're going out into like the wild for this, guys. We're going out to some sort of saw. I don't actually know what the name of the saw is that he's writing on right now. Also, none of these dimensions are actually accurate. I am putting in the accurate dimensions, you know, in a little bit. It's just, I wanted to record the process. It's a weird vlog style thing, guys, really. Also, a couple things. First, um, I am actually doing this on Friday. Just dropped the lie, the lie, that's coming up. That's a different video. The uh, palm oil recipe, right? And um, I'm looking at my list and this comes out on Monday. So recording this now, none of those are accurate. Do not screen cap this. Do not screen cap this. These aren't actually accurate. This is the whole measure twice, cut once thing. I'm just recording his process and also showing you that Mr. Soap and Clay is a lefty. Here are the actual measurements. Screen cap this. These are the cuts that you're going to need to do and they're important. So screen cap this right here. And for the cuts, this is actually <laughs> kind of funny because Mr. Soap and Clay was like, should we be filming this on, you know, $4,000 worth of equipment if we are saying that this is something that you can do without? And you can do without all of this. Materials that you actually need are, you know, a screw gun or a, a screwdriver to that. Just 
takes longer. It's like using the tools that come in the Ikea boxes. You shouldn't use those. You should just get your screw guns. And as I just pointed out in the little thing that I, I screen capped, you, if you don't have kind of basic tools and this is not for you, this is also the lumber that we are using. Now, this lumber ranges from like $12 to $20, depending on what you are wanting to work with. And a one eight foot board will get you two molds. So that's awesome. But so yeah, Friday night recording this, right? As I'm looking at my list, tomorrow is a deep dive on olive oil and I don't have that done. So we're right down to the wire with all of this. But cutting that in half right there to get that bottom base plate, that means that you get two molds out of these cuts. It's all gonna make sense in a minute, I promise. Okay, so no, you do not need $4,000 hairs worth of tools to do this. You need a screw gun or a screwdriver. You, I mean, I recommend a screw gun because you're gonna need to drill pilot holes into all these pieces. And that's, you know, to actually make the screw gun, it's, uh, that's the screw gun. But we have to make all of these pieces fit together, like, or fasten together, rather. And I really love using wood for my molds because it's a good insulator. And because I see pop and gel everything, that's the thing that we're going to use to drill the holes. But because I see pop and gel everything, wood, it's good, holds the heat does the thing. I'm also going to show you how to line this mold. It's all easy peasy, but we need something like, I don't know, like 16 ish screws. Go back and see how many screws I put in the thing. Now, also in this exact point here, you could have clamps to clamp these two pieces of wood together to drill an accurate pilot hole. But Mr. Soap and Clay is already a clamp in and of himself. And the whole point with like talking about the, how expensive all the, you know, tools or whatever is, this is his job, you guys. Like, well, I mean, this isn't his job job, Like he doesn't do this for like a living anymore, like actually building, but this is how he started. And we also used a countersink to get the screws in to be flush. That's what that little tool guy was. But none of this is necessary. Screw gun, I would recommend a screw gun. A saw of some type. It could be a miter saw. It could be a hacksaw. It could, just something to cut your lumber down. Also, Home Depot and Lowe's will cut your lumber down to whatever size you want. So you can actually just give them those dimensions and then you can come home and just screw it together. In all actuality, the amount of time that it took him to build this was um about the same amount of time that it took me to line the first mold. And then he was, you know, at the soap shop with the second mold. So very, very easy process. The biggest thing that you're gonna wanna keep in mind with all of this is you want to make sure everything is level and flush and uh, wood is going to wood. So for these two pieces, the long pieces that you're attaching to the base, easy enough. Again, you can use a clamp if you are not a human clamp, like Mr. Soap and Clay is, and the countersinking of the screws, not necessary. You don't have to do this. He just does because it looks more professional and he can't not let things exist professionally. Now again, this, this lumber that we got, this board, it's anywhere between 12 and 20 bucks. So this is what amount of money you actually have invested in all of this. And the amount of time that it took Mr. Soap and Clay to make this, less than 10 minutes. And so it's a pretty good price point to build a mold to whatever size that you need. Now these particular molds, I wanted him to make instead of 12 inches for the interior dimensions, I wanted him to make it 12 and a half, which would give me two end pieces because when you're lining a mold, the end pieces get weird, right? They're not fully like flat and they just, they don't look the same. So I wanted to be able to have two cutoffs 
and 12 perfect bars out of a mold this size. Now a mold this size for, you know, all of the recipes that I have given you for the channel, it is like 38 ish ounces of oil, 12 ish ounces of water and six ish ounces of lye. That all changes a little bit. I mean, the oils don't change, but the lye and the water changes based on what oils you're using. But that's basically it. So this is going to give you 12 perfect 4.75 ounce bars of soap when cured in this mold with two end pieces. Now, with the end, these ends that he is putting on right now, wood is going to wood. Wood is not going to be perfectly straight. And so you have to pay attention to everything lining up so you have a nice squared out mold, right? And that's why he did one side at a time because you get down to this last side and he's going to have to do a little bit of wiggle room to make that, make that line up and make it nice and square. But it's easy. It's easy peasy. He is going to take that and he is going to put it down and he's going to apply pressure so it's all nice and flush to drill the pilot hole, which goes through both pieces of wood. All these pilot holes go through both pieces of wood. The countersinking only goes through the outside piece of wood because you don't need to countersink the inside piece of wood. And so that's why that tip, it's not as deep. It's just to get the screw nice and flush with the outside. And he's going to push down to make sure that those holes line up and screw it all in. And just like that, you have a perfectly squared, beautiful wood mold that you can now line and make all the soapy things in. It holds heat well. It insulates the soap during the saponification. And you can make two of them for like 20 bucks. And so as far as I'm concerned, that's a pretty good ROI. And in all actuality, what you really need is some sort of screw, gun, and some sort of saw thing. And if you don't have those basic tools, honey, you should not be making your own molds. Like go ahead and go spend $75 doll hairs for literally the same thing somewhere else. Do not invest in the tools if you do not have them. Okay, leaving the vlog style content and moving on to the, you know, soap shop. We are going to line this beautiful, perfect, fully squared, easy peasy, five cuts on some kind of saw mold, you know now. And when I, I remember looking up videos a long time ago about how to line a mold, right? And A, they didn't super exist, but two, the ones that did, that I thought I would be interested in, had like really precise maths. And I think F that noise. You have the mold in front of you. So what you want to do is make sure that both sides go over the end pieces of the mold and you make a note and you make a cut. Now, because Mr. Soap and Clay was able to make me two molds out of this eight foot board length, I'm going to make two liners, I'm going to line them both. And so a nice firm crease there, and you use the edges, right? For your, what is square thing. And then you're gonna cut there. And so now I have two pieces of paper that will line two of these molds and I'm going to cut it in half. And again, with this, yes, you can make a, you can make a template with the official proper dimensions of all the things or whatever, like you can do, 
I tried to do years and years ago and the template never fully lined up. So this is what I prefer to do for all lining of molds. Now, I just make a random crease that will go up the sides of the sides and give it a nice, really firm, really good crease. So run your, your fingernails along that. Also, side note, since I'm doing all this, I can't, um, you know, use my teeth. I also can't bite my nails anymore. So my nails are growing and that's gross, but it also does help with the uh, creasing of things. Now, once you have the one crease in, you put your mold back on the paper and line up one interior edge with the paper and then just make a note, just make a little line as to where you need to make your fold. And then after that, again, this is kind of an arbitrary crease. You need to make sure that it will be as tall as the mold, but you don't unfold anything. Just keep it all folded up and you just use the side because those are straight cut. Those are straight seams there to line it up. So you know that you have a straight fold and then you're going to put it into your mold. And so look, it all fits. It's all great. We're going to shove that to the side there and put the rest of the paper kind of downish. And then we are going to use a anything. I use the end of a pen to create the line that I'm going to need to, you know, then take out and crease properly. But I'm just going to use the other side, the not writing side of a pen to create that line and just really dig it in there so I know where I'm supposed to fold. But since it's already in, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the excess so it's easier to work with. This particular excess I use to line my one pound molds for my soap classes, which is good because we don't like wasting things. And on that line that I just created, we're going to fold it over, make sure all of the straight edges line up and give it a nice, really good crease. Now we are going to open it up and we are going to cut out all of the excess paper in these corners. We want to be able to fold this together, right? And it's easier when you have less paper. So we are just going to cut out this bit of excess. Now, this is the only actual waste in a piece of butcher paper, shiny side up, that you're going to experience with lining your mold this way. And you know, that sucks. Waste sucks for sure. But that's a little bit. Now you're going to just very simply line up these creases you've already created and fold that over and create like a pocket. And that's easy enough. So you're going to do that to all four corners. So you have like a literal, like a pocket, like an envelope that goes into your mold. And this is where things get a little bit tricky and something that you should actually keep in mind for all this. In order to properly fold this envelope down into the mold, so it's a nice, really smooth, you can see what you're doing, there's no pieces of paper flopping around to do whatever, you're going to want to cut down the sides on all four corners so you can fold it up easily. But right now, as it stands, you've created a pocket, you've created an envelope, the thing in which you are going to pour your soap into. And are there going to be end pieces that are going to be a little bit rough? Yes, yes there are. Does that matter? Well, not with these new dimensions, it doesn't matter. You're going to get 12 perfect bars of soap and two little end pieces. And you know, what you decide to do with your end pieces is your own you know, decision, but 
I use them for bits and bobs because those bags go down like gangbusters with everybody. Now, once you have cut that down, see how easy it is to fold it down and just tape it down with regular scotch tape right now, right now, depending on how clean you actually keep the outside of your mold, because this is a brand new mold, you might want to use blue tape to really secure and fasten your sides, or, you know, maybe you don't care at all. I don't know. Most of the time, I don't care at all, but I have right now brand new wood. So scotch tape works really well. And I can just fold everything over, crease everything really nicely, and just hold it down with some scotch tape so it will all be the perfect little envelope for me to pour all of my soap into. Now, the amount of time that it took me to line this mold is about the amount of time that it took Mr. Soap and Clay to make a second mold. So we are talking, you know, 10 minutes to make the mold, 10 minutes to line the mold, which granted, that actually kind of freaking sucks. So that's one of the reasons why sometimes you see me with super dirty liners, because I reuse that shit until it, it starts breaking, because I love the planet and I don't like putting this stuff into the environment. But that is a really easy peasy build your own mold and then line said mold. And there it is, an easy peasy lemon squeezy soap mold tutorial, as well as how to line it. And yeah, no, these dimensions, because I wanted to make sure I had two end pieces and 12 perfect bars, we just increased the dimensions by like a quarter of an inch from my old full 12 inch inside to allow me to do so. Now all of my bars as a result are going to be just barely teeny tiny lighter, but that's okay too. I don't actually have to resize my batch for this at all. So 38 ounces of oil, 12-ish ounces of water, six-ish ounces of lye. That's my standard batch for all of the, the soaps that I show you, really. And also how to line it. So I hope you guys had fun and uh, got some useful information out of all of this, for sure. I'm out of here for two days. I actually owe Mr. Soap and Clay a night of gaming after doing all of that for me, so I'm going to go do that. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.